it's common sense. We all know it. Some people are naturally better at certain things than other people. Some people are faster runners. Some people can build muscle faster. Some people can learn a musical instrument much faster. Some people can learn math faster. It's just the way it is. And we all have hopefully something that we're good at. In this video, I don't want to talk about people who have gifts. I want to talk about people who feel that they are genuinely bad at math. And I think that after watching this video, hopefully you'll feel a little bit better. So if you feel that you are bad at math, just know that there is a lot of hope. There's a lot of hope. And I think you can do it. I've taught thousands of students over the years. And so I've seen varying degrees of intellect. I've had extremely good students and I've had students that struggled. I mean, students that worked really, really hard and they just really struggled. Like they had a hard time. Learning math is really like anything else, except you can't see it because it happens up here. As a simple example, if you take two people and you put them on identical diets and identical training programs, they're going to have different results, right? One person is going to build more muscle and burn more fat than the other person. The same is true in a classroom with, you know, 30, 40 students. They all have the same lecture. They all have the same homework. Some of them are going to do better than others. And even when they put in, you know, roughly equal amounts of effort, you're still going to get some students that don't perform as well. So what can you do about it if you're bad at math? Well, let me just tell you a story. So I had a student once, it was a calculus two class and he studied. Okay. He came to my office hours and he was always there every day. He had a good study group. He would go to the study groups with his friends, quiet guy, sat in the back, um, really tried. I can always see he was paying attention in class. He took notes, you know, he finished all of his homework. He had a 100% on all of his homework assignments, right? He finished all of them. But on every single test, he never scored above a C. I mean, it was always like C's, D's, and F's every single test. This guy barely passed my class. I mean, I mean, it was just, I mean, he barely made it. And I was thinking, ah, he's going to have a really hard time, you know, in other classes. And he didn't. He didn't. He actually took Calculus 3 and he got an A. And he took Differential Equations and he got an A but he barely passed my Calc 2 class. And we all know Calc 2, if you know anything about calculus and the calculus sequence, Calc 2 is, you know, the hardest one. But still, I mean, this guy was, I mean, just barely made it through Calc 2, right? Barely, 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 barely. So I really didn't think he could do it. But something changed, right? Something must have changed for him, right? Something in his, in his life must have changed. Maybe it was just, you know, the hurdle of getting over Calculus 2, which, which is a big hurdle for a lot of people. So sometimes it's just not your time, right? Sometimes you just need time and whatever is going on in your life will pass and you'll get better. Or it could be that your brain is just not ready for it. You know, when I was in eighth grade, I remember being in an algebra class and there was a guy next to me, uh, he was from India and he was writing something on a piece of paper and he was writing, you know, X plus Y equals Y plus X. And he wrote commutative. And then he did the associative property and then the distributive property. And I was trying to copy him and he let me copy him. He's, he was looking at me funny. I'm like, oh, and I, cause I was desperate. I did not know what was going on. And so after that day, I thought, I don't know what's going on in this class. I don't understand all these symbols. You know, what is X? What is Y? It was my first time seeing algebra. And before that, I was pretty good at arithmetic, but algebra was like this mind-blowing thing, these new mysterious symbols, X, Y, Z. I didn't know what was going on. So I went to the principal's office. I told the principal that I had no idea what was going on in math class. Can you please help me? And so he took me out of the class and he put me in a class with bad kids. It was horrible. They threw spitballs at me. It was geometry class. I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it wasn't fun, right? It wasn't a fun class. Fast forward later, you know, I was okay in math. So sometimes time just has to pass. Whatever is going on in your life or maybe mentally, you're just not prepared for it. So if you're watching this video and you're working really, really hard and you're not getting the results you want to get, sometimes it's just a matter of time. 
Another thing I want to mention is that, you know, when people say that they're bad at math, I, I do think, and this is going to sound really, really bad, but I think a lot of times it's overblown. Like, I don't think they're bad at math. I think that the majority of people who say they are bad at math aren't necessarily bad at math. And I only say this because I'm speaking from personal experience. You know, I, I've had students who, I mean, they just struggled so much. And, and you can clearly tell that they weren't as good as their classmates. But they made up for it with hard work. They were able to work really, really hard and get good grades. Not all of them got A's, but some of them got B's. Like I had a student once, she, she worked incredibly hard. I mean, every day she was on campus for like eight hours a day, which I know most people, most people can't do that, right? Because most people have jobs, responsibilities. And so she was always in my office hours, always working, always asking questions. And I don't think I've ever seen anyone work so hard, ever. It's, it's, it's inspiring. And she did good. She got a good grade. You know, she got a good grade. And I always think if she could do it, anyone can do it. Another hot topic on being bad at math, which I typically avoid on this channel, but I feel like this is the appropriate video to mention it because maybe some of you watching have this. So teaching for so many years, I had plenty of students with learning disabilities. So first, let me say that I'm not an expert on learning disabilities. I don't even know what they are. I just know that some students have them. And as a teacher, you know, I was required to, you know, give them special accommodations. You know, some students had, for example, extra time on the test. Some students had just testing in a distraction reduced environment. So they would just take the test in a different room and they would get no perks other than the fact that they had to go to a testing center, which to me sounds worse, right? You have to go, you have to sign in, and there's a person there. I mean, it just sounds like a very stressful experience, and I believe it is. I, I personally would not want to go to any testing center to take a test. I'd rather take it in the classroom. But these students needed quiet time, you know, just the simple sound of like, I don't have a pencil here, but the sound of a pencil, you know, just the writing or someone shuffling their papers or someone chewing gum, those little things, I guess, get to them. I'll never forget the first time I had a student with a disability, she failed her first test. She got like a 61. And I was like, oh no, poor girl. And I remember giving her a test back and I felt really, really bad. She sat near the front, second row on the left. I remember exactly where she sat and she took notes. She participated, always pleasant. I gave her back her test and she smiled. And, and then after class, um, she said, she told me she had a disability. And I was like, well, bring me the paper. You know, there's teachers are supposed to get some type of, you know, confirmation. So the next day she came in, gave me a piece of paper saying, here's my disability. And her accommodation was simply take the test in the testing center. It was, it was nothing else. It was not extra time, no open notes. So I, I was thinking, like, this is not going to help her. I was thinking, this is not going to help the student, right? There, here's a student who got a D and now she wants to take the test in the testing center, right? I didn't know I had just started teaching. So fast forward, the student goes to the testing center takes the test, gets an A. Okay, I'm not kidding. This is a true story. I think she got like a, it was like a high A. It was a very high A. So something simple like that, some simple change, right? Taking your testing from, you know, a testing in a classroom environment to testing in a, in a different environment that there's no distractions. What a huge change in the grade, right? So little things like that. And, and I think that's because people are different and people learn different. So if you're watching this video, and you know you have some type of learning disability just know just know there's hope you know just know there's hope in my experience you know my personal experience all the students i've ever had that have had these disabilities they they always do well right they always do well they work hard um you know they do whatever it takes so i think the lesson here is that if you feel you're bad at math if you feel you're genuinely bad at math and you're one of those people who just feels like you work really really hard and you don't get the results you want and everyone around you is working less or just as hard and getting better results, it's okay. It's part of life, right? It's part of life. Eventually, you'll get better. And, and I can tell countless stories, right? When I took physics, I studied like crazy, right? In both physics one and physics two. All my friends got A's, right? They all got A's. I got B's, right? And I studied every single day. I worked so hard in that class wasn't until I got to physics three that everything all of a sudden clicked and I did a lot better. So sometimes it just takes time.
So again, when people say they're bad at math, I think a lot of times it's just they're not in the right place. It's not the right time. Most people can learn math, right? Especially if it's, you know, basic math like algebra, even calculus and differential equations, you know. It doesn't get really, really hard, I think. I mean, it gets a lot harder when you get to proof-based mathematics. That That's really the game changer. Like, if, if you can learn proof-based mathematics, you can get a degree in mathematics. Like, you can get a math degree. That That is what you have to know because if you can learn proof-based mathematics, you can pick up a, a, a mathematics book on any topic, advanced calculus, abstract algebra, any topic, and you can technically start learning from it. You're still going to struggle. It's still going to be incredibly hard, right? But you'll be able to understand the structure of the solutions because you have that proof structure in your mind. So what can you do if you're bad at mathematics? Well, you can try different things, right? You can try to study in a distraction-free zone. Try to study a little bit every day. I always think that if you make math a daily habit, if you just do like one problem a day, it's a good way to get started and to create a routine. Now, obviously doing one problem a day, is not going to help you pass your class. I mean, it'll help, but like, it's not going to be enough, right? If you're, if you're taking a pre-calculus class and you do one pre-calculus problem every day, um, it's certainly not going to be enough to do well in the class, but it's certainly going to help. You know, maybe now you're in a class and you're just doing math sometimes. Try to turn it into a daily habit and try to do at least one problem. And I think it'll help you. As far as books, I have tons of book reviews here on the channel, but I've got some workbooks here that I want to show you because they're affordable and they might help you. So the first one here is this one here. It's calculus with multiple variables. This one is good for anyone taking calculus three. It's got very specific topics from Calc three and it has examples that you won't find in other books. Like you'll find more examples of things in this book than you will in the big thick textbook. So, and it has full worked out solutions. Yeah, it says, uh, includes vector calculus and full solutions. So I'll leave links in the description to all of these. This one's perfect for anyone who wants to get better at calculus three. It doesn't cover everything, right? This is not an actual math book. It's a math workbook, okay? That's why it's so affordable. So I wanted to pick things that you know people can afford because calculus books can get pretty expensive. This one's pretty cheap. Another one that I like, just switching topics, is this one here. This one, its biggest flaw is that it doesn't cover everything, right? But it's just a workbook. This is good for someone who's struggling with basic algebra. It's really affordable. And again, it's got answers to everything. So it definitely will help you. If you are taking trig, this one is incredible. This one has trig topics and the author, Chris McMullen, he focuses on the topics that people struggle with. So there's a lot of stuff with like solving trig equations and finding, you know, uh, trig function values. Very, very important stuff, very useful. I, I this is a wonderful book. I, I wish I would have had it uh, when I took trig, but it was written after I took trig. <laughs> so that doesn't work. And then this one is just a calculus one. This actually has topics from Calc 1, Calc 2, and I believe it has one topic from Calc 3. Yeah, it's got multiple integrals. Yeah, so very nice. It's got selected topics. Um, it's a pretty good book, it's a pretty good book. And the last one is the most basic one. It's a pre-algebra book. So if you genuinely believe you're bad at math, or if you're just if you're just at a level where you just don't know a lot of math, because just because you don't know a lot of math doesn't mean you're bad at math. It just means you don't know it, right? So when I say bad at math, I mean, you know, you just have to work, you know, exponentially harder than everyone else. And and there are people like that, but again, it's very rare. So pretty good for pre-algebra. Anyways, remember, you know, some people are just better than other people. They just naturally are better at mathematics. But I've had thousands of students, I've seen it, okay? I've seen people come back. I've seen people rise from the ashes. Anything is possible, it really is, it really is. Just one more story before I finish this video. I know it's getting long. The first class I ever taught, okay, this is, the, I was in graduate school and I was the actual teacher and there was these two guys and they were brothers. And I'm sure I've told this story before, but I'll just tell it again their grades got better every single test. It was something like out of, out of a movie. You know, they, they both failed the first test and then they got like D's and C's and B's and then A's. And I think they got almost perfect scores in the final and they just got, they just did better and better and better. So that, that, that's, those are the cool stories, right? Those people who, who come back from failure. Anyways, if you're watching this video still and you're bad at math, just know there's hope. Keep trying. 
We just need practice and time. I genuinely believe that most people, I mean, everyone I've seen can learn basic math. If you have any comments, any cool stories to share, advice for people, people read the comments. So when you leave interesting stories, especially the stories, the stories are good or personal stories, um, yeah, just leave them in the comments because uh, it does help people. Anyways, take care. Keep doing math.